أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفتح قولي اللهم أفرق قلبنا بحب العلم رب زدن علم رب زدن علم رب زدن علم my very dear and respectable brothers and sisters the passionate learners of quran i welcome you all and say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i congratulate you all wa alaikum the quran class assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, the prophet of allah said khairukum man ta'allama al-qur'an wa 'allamahu the best amongst you is the one who learns quran and teaches it so we are alhamdulillah part of this wonderful wonderful process of learning the words of the book of allah uh inshallah in each class we will be achieving a new milestone today's class is very important in the context that within this one hour only inshallah and by covering only two more verses of the surah fatiha and also in grammar we are going to learn the possessive cases we have already done the zamair or the pronouns so another form of the pronouns and these things will help us to translate 3650 3650 words of quran <laughs> May I request everybody to please uh, put your mics off? Mr. Um, Sam. Tami kya pura hai? Me na hoye hai, bada kya ho six six ka? Okay, I hope the sound will not disturb us now. So, uh, what I am saying is, inshallah, today after this one hour investment of your time only, you will be able to translate. 3650 words of quran in english at your own so alhamdulillah we must we, we we always praise allah for this and we should also remember to thank and pray for dr abdul aziz abdul rahim who has made this so easy for us so much easy for us for designing such a wonderful course which has made life uh, you know really easy now uh, moving forward so let's let's begin and see what comes on our way and inshallah how will we do it uh, by the end of this lesson we would have crossed 12000 words of quran at all and uh, inshallah this is already explained to you every day we have to do these seven things and these are we will recite from quran by opening it and seeing from it and inshallah every day we'll try to see the words which we are learning whether they are there and we are able to translate them and then from your memory okay whatever you have already memorized from the quran you can recite and think about what comes in it and can you translate it for example when i when i stand for prayer uh, you know even in the isha prayer i was there so imam was reciting ayat and it is such a wonderful moment you know it's such a prayer it's such a connection to allah that you are understanding what is being said you know so you so we can't hear you do you hear me now yes i can hear you clearly okay <clears throat> sorry i think there was some issue with the mic so i was talking about like you you are involved in it you know and when allah is giving a message about the rewards he will offer to the ones who follow his way you will feel pleasure and happiness yes. and satisfaction yes. so please do that and then study from the book we have given you the soft copy of the book so you can print it your choice or you can keep a soft copy you can read from it we send you the pdf files you can open them and you can see your lesson 
uh, you know, similarly, you can listen to these videos. And here I would also like to apologize. Yesterday, the unfortunately, the class could not be recorded properly. So I sent you a video from the another batch, uh, the lesson two. I'm sure you have enjoyed listening to it. Uh, then make such friends and fellows and partners in your family, your brothers, sisters, your wife, your son, your father, your mother, anybody, and you can collectively learn together. So all these things will inshallah help us. And never forget to say, Rabbi Zidnail Ma, because this is the dua Allah taught his uh, prophet uh, to say this, to learn better. Okay. Now, before moving forward, we would listen to the translation of Surah Fatiha, uh, the, sorry, the recitation of Surah Fatiha. And now today, because you have covered some part of it already, you have covered Ta'awuz and you have covered the first three verses. So once it is played, you listen to the recitation, try to uh, translate it in your mind, uh, look at the words, can, are you able to break them down? Do you understand their grammatical construction? So inshallah, that will be a quick, good revision, right? So are we all set and ready for it? Let's... Uh, So these uh, verses of uh, Surah Fatiha, I'm sure when you were listening to it, you were looking at its uh, meanings and uh, you are able to uh, relate something with it. Let me ask you a couple of challenging questions before I move to today's lesson. And uh, the, the, who would like to differentiate between Rahman and Rahim? Just let me know in the chat box. How do you understand the difference between the two words? Okay, Sister Sawabiha, uh, to be able to, yeah, yeah, exactly. You have corrected it immediately. So, well done, very good. Yeah, this is to the Rahman tells us about the intensity of Allah's Rahma, His mercy, you know? And the Rahim tells us about, great. It tells us about the continuity of Allah's mercy. So Allah is, Allah is merciful, he is continuously merciful, he is intensely merciful, okay? Uh, so, and let me know also, uh, because some of you were finding it difficult and uh, disturbing to see the chat box. So we have uh, made it for ourselves, only we, could, we will be able to see it. Uh, if sometimes the chat box is open, you also have an option in your chat box on the top. There is an option whether you would like to see the chat or not. Okay. So you may like to use it also. Anyways, uh, mashallah, brother Musa Dadi is very right. Rahman is intensity. Rahim is continuously. Sister Rukaya. Uh, yeah. Great. Well done. Now, let me know the two meanings of hamd. Hamd. What are the two meanings of hamd? Yeah, mashallah. Hamd is number one, praise. Number two, thanks. So we we praise Allah and we thank Allah. Alhamd. Okay. And al here means al al means mashallah. Mashallah. Augustine, Sawabiha, Sister Sadaf, Sister Nayab. Yeah, that that is that special. That's perfectly all right, Sister Sabi and Sister Saidu, Musa, and Kabir. It makes it a special noun, but at the same time, it has a meaning also, which is all. You know, it has a meaning, which is all. Alhamd means all the praise and thanks. So when I say what are the meanings, you should tell meaning all. When I say what is its grammatical construction, uh, whether the word is ism, fail, or har, then you can say, you know, this is is this this uh, uh, cannotates maybe the sorry cannots to the Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Now today, inshallah, we'll move forward with the next words, which is Maliki Yawmiddin, Master of the Day of Judgment. So now let's look at the word Malik. Malik in Arabic it can be. Uh, you know, it can be shown with the symbol, uh, this standing patha, and it could be 
uh, it could also be written in this way maliki maliki master master who owns something you know master so allah is malik so remember the meanings malik starts with ma sound and master also starts with ma sound so just a little tip for you to remember the meanings malik master malik master so it's malik master it will be easy for you to remember the meanings master one who owns something okay there is another word malak malak what does it mean malak malak is angel malak is angel what is its plural which we normally use it is used many times in quran and we say it all so what is the plural ya yeah, mashallah excellent so the plural of malak is malaika malak is malaika now here is a point for all of us to learn and that point is remember here again you know this uh, since we have learned that we use this circular ta for showing the feminine gender but here it is only showing the plural malaika okay so we have to remember these things that's why you are being clarified whenever such concept comes generally uh, we will be using it as uh, you know to connotate and show the the uh, feminine gender but here it is the plural of malak malaika okay right now let's move forward uh, so malik is the master and malak is the angel next word is yom yom is one day a day yom and yom if i ask you now what is yom is it fail or har so you might find it difficult to tell me what it is but if i put you know i write it this way you know now i think you all can easily tell me let me use some other color because this yellow is being a little dull let me use this one now if i put this on this i think you all can easily tell me and this is a plural okay so yom yom is one yom one day ayam is the plural okay no arabs would just write it yom ayam so but today since you have learned it is actually yamun ayamun so you know it's a, it's a noun and singular is yom a day ayam is plural four or five times in quran alhamdulillah by just learning it quickly we know that you know we can translate it when it appears in quran okay so yom is a day ayam is plural okay now next word is adin what is adin adin day of judgment now let me ask you first an important question now for adin can you tell me whether it is ism fail or harf noun verb or a preposition yeah brother marwan mashallah he is so quick he is able to immediately answer it brother imran as well yeah umar and sister sawabiha yeah that you know how could you tell this very quickly because now you know there is an alif lam so this is a proper noun adin adin okay now this word means day of judgment day of judgment and day of judgment means the day when the result will be announced the day of output the day of final um you know resolve of, of the final results so the day when the good and the bad deeds uh, the, the you, you know the reward the results of the good and bad deeds will be given so adin now this word actually has two meanings the meaning used here is judgment what judgment now remember the din word means judgment yom means day so we have to remember the meaning of din which is judgment but to easily remember you can use the phrase yawm with din day of judgment but din means judgment din has another meaning which we very commonly use we say din e islam okay so what does that mean that means system of life 
when we say deen islam islam is the system of life it has it has lesson and guidelines for every part of our life but here the meanings remember both the meanings but here the meanings we have used is deen judgment or results or output okay by adding yom that becomes day of judgment which is the uh, the last day yom akhira okay now mai abhi ki yom din very important aya and now when we apply this model on the day of judgment allah will have the sole authority nobody shall have any power he will alone judge among the people you know allah is still the authority allah owns everything right now but we have been given certain you know uh, some limited authority as well so we have been given a chance to exercise it on that day no one can intercede except the one who is given the permission by allah as it is mentioned in uh, ayatul kursi yashfa inda illa bi isni so maliki yawmiddin day of judgment will be a terrible day and it has been explained in quran in number of uh, ways and by examples such a horrible day that we will run from each other our very close relatives brothers sisters mother father children you know imagine the parents in this life you know if my son will be a little upset or disturbed you know this morning uh because my son is doing that hips uh you know uh, memorizing quran by heart so uh he had to go to his class and he could not reach there and i was so upset you know about him i was calling one person second i was calling so many people to check out whether he has reached or not but on that day i'll be more concerned about myself i'll forget about everything imagine that will be such a terrible day in this life i am ready to give my life for my son i am ready to give my life for my parents i am ready to give my life for my uh, brothers and sisters you know fellow muslims maybe but on that day i'll be only caring for myself it will be such a horrible day it will be such a day terrible day that we will be now understand bring that in your mind for that day okay but when you are reading this aya maliki yawm ad-din we should hope and anticipate and we should have such good uh you know uh expectations from allah we shall we shall anticipate allah will have mercy that he will reward us for our good deeds but we must be careful you know simultaneously at the same day we should fear the punishment for doing for wrong doings and we stop ourselves and this aya gives us a message he has made us muslims without our asking just out of his mercy you know now that we are asking him for jannah we should hope inshallah he will continue his same mercy and he will grant us for our dua and he will put us in a, in the jannah but to go to jannah we should plan for every day keeping the akhira in our mind so that should be our another habit habit number 7 so so 7 okay 4 and 3 7 uh 7 habit number 7 we have learned six habits already seventh one is whatever you do in life keep the akhira in mind if you keep the day of judgment in your mind if you keep keep the horrible scene of the day of judgment in your mind remember the death remember the grave remember the questions remember the day of judgment you know you, this will remind you this will stop you to do the wrong things you'll be telling a lie and your brain tells you you remember the day of judgment you say no, no no i don't need to tell a lie just stay quiet don't say something wrong when i when i have to start cheating and i remember the day of judgment i say no 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 why should i cheat when i am stealing when i am being dishonest when i am being harsh with people so i should remind myself of day of judgment what do i hope and expect on that day allah's mercy so let us be merciful so pray salah and you know on time and don't miss tilawa and azkar keep healthy and make sure to not use your eyes and ears and tongue and hands 
and feet in wrong going my dear brothers and sisters i tell you there is so much good to be done and it is so easy to do in this life where we are living it is very easy i am telling you to do good things why should we put ourselves in this trouble for god sake you know the prophet's life imagine that time when it was so difficult the prophet would go long distances no transportation nothing nothing to eat and there will be you know the boycott of the prophet and there will be days when you know for the many many days he would not eat for three times in a day there will be only a day to eat comparable to that we live in such a wonderful life so why should we do anything wrong i sometimes you know fail to understand why should we do it but of course shaitan is there our enemy is there he is continuously trying us to be to detract us but let's all of us keep the akhirah in mind use our life our youth our money our knowledge for the right way i'll use my money to buy a better internet package to learn quran i'll use my money to use my cell phone for the good purpose rather than just posting sending uh, irrelevant posts to the other people you know there are beautiful things happening all around us this uh, you know before this class i was attending a wonderful session on dawa so one of our brother from us he was conducting that session and we were online and attending it was a beautiful session so we can do so many good things on cell phones in our life keeping akhirah in mind and inshallah if you'll keep the akhirah in mind you will always be on track so brother and sister time for you alimu alimu is teach each other if you are alone say it loud enough that you listen it for yourself if you're taking your written notes wonderful nothing better than that so 20 seconds for you so uh now next aya is another beautiful aya of surah fatiha iya kana abudu wa iya kana astain you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help iya ka now let's look at the first word and its construction and the very first word iya ka is composed of two words actually iya and ka iya and ka two words okay iya and ka now the word ka inshallah shortly in the grammar section we are going to learn this uh so iya and ka actually ka is you ka is used for you in arabic formula ka could not come alone so iya has come here to support the ka and iya gives stress it makes it more powerful you know when we have to uh, uh, we have to uh, emphasize on our talk i would say only you can do it for me one could be you can do it for me i would say no only you can do it for me so i am stressing it similarly iya ka you alone it is only you so we we are saying allah iya ka you alone so from this context because next word which is coming is telling us the context na budu so iya ka you alone with stress you only na budu na budu means so the word na budu is it is i am sure when you re read the word na budu you could see ain badal with which connects us to the word ibada ibada worship ibada is normally used that's why i am giving that example ibada ibada worship ibada worship similarly i think the common words which you already know is uh abid who's abid abid is uh the one who does worship abid worshiper okay 
Abid. We are worshippers. And who do we worship? Ma'bud. So these words, inshallah, will help you to always remember the meanings of Ma'budu. We worship Allah, Ma'bud. He is Ma'bud. One who is worshipped, Ma'bud. So see, all these words have Ayn Ba'dal. These are the three root letters. Okay, we call them root letters. They are there. Na'budu. Na'budu. We worship. So we are saying, Iyaka Na'budu. You alone, O Allah, we worship. Na'budu. Wa. You know the meaning of Wa already. And. Wa means. And. We learnt it in the first class. I hope you all remember that. Wa. Iyaka. Iyaka has come again. So. And only you. Nastain. Nastain asking for help. Nastain. 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 So, you know, in these words, the letter na, it is actually, uh, remember one thing, we will not separate it. We will not parts, make parts of it. Uh, but the na here is actually uh, showing we. Nabudu. It stands for B. All right. B. Nabudu Nastain. We worship. We ask for help. We seek your help. All right. Uh, inshallah, in the same course, as we move forward in the coming classes, you will understand this construction, how it becomes. And that will be a very uh, happy moment for you. We will all enjoy that time. Uh, God willing. Uh, so, now let's see what this ayah tells us. Allah has created us all so that we worship him. And it is mentioned in Quran. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ So, uh, I have not created jinn and human beings except for the purpose that they worship me. You know, so... We have been created, brother and sister, it's a very sensitive message. We have been created for ibadah. Iyaka na'budu. You know? Now, what does ibadah mean? It, it, it is at times threatening also. Then what are we doing in our life? We are earning, we are playing, we are going out, we are doing so much other than ibadah. You know? What, what ibadah means? Ibadah means not only to worship, offering the worship like uh, praying, giving zakah, reading Quran, uh, etc. Also to obey Allah's orders. You know, when we are following Allah's order, for example, Allah wants us to un halal, you know, from the right means. That's an ibadah. If we do that, and Allah says, if we refrain from disobeying Him, we are doing abad abadah. So somebody wants me to, you know, uh, be his partner for stealing something or doing a financial corruption. So I say, no, 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 I will not do it. Why? Because Allah has forbidden us to do this. So you're doing ibadah. So to offer salah, to fast, to give alms, to go for hajj, to invite others towards Islam. When you are telling people that I'm learning this Quran course and I'm learning this, I would like to teach you about it, you know. That's ibadah. And if you if you convince them to register for the next course, by the way, please don't uh, ask people to register for this course now. We have closed the admissions. I am receiving many uh, requests every day, but unfortunately, we can't give uh, you know because we have already covered so many classes. Inshallah, we are registering them for the next course. Uh, but anyways, when you convince people, that's also ibadah. So to seek knowledge, halal earnings. It's such a beautiful religion. We have such a beautiful religion. You earn for yourself, for your eating, for your family. But you earn halal with good intentions, that will be ibadah. So a Muslim's life 24-7 could be ibadah. Alhamdulillah. We should feel happy. The only condition is we should do it for Allah. We should keep good intentions. That's it. So simple. <laughs> What's wrong in it? You know, but at the same time, remember in ibadah, salah is very important. Salah. It should be the most dear to us. Because salah, because in salah, 
we are standing quietly with full attention towards Allah. We bow before him. So we do sajada. So, you know, we should not leave salah. And whoever leaves salah intentionally, he commits kufr and demolishes an important pillar of Islam according to the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Salah is important, inshallah. I, I, I pray for myself to Allah and let's all of us pray, oh Allah, make us steadfast on salah. Help me to worship you in the best way, the way that pleases you. You know, so habit number eight is we should have niyyah, intention of ibadah for every good task, inshallah. You are helping somebody, you are going out, you are doing your job. Uh, wherever you are with this niyyah, oh Allah, I am doing everything for you and I'll try to do it in the best possible manner. So inshallah, you'll get a peace of mind and a true success. And it can only be achieved by every moment of life in Ibadah. So next word is without Allah's help, nothing can be achieved. So we ask for his help. We ask for his help for Ibadah. We ask for his help for everything. You know, I cannot even move my hand for having a water, for, you know, just having to drink water. Because if Allah stops me to breathe, I cannot even move my hands. You know, there are examples of people who cannot move themselves. They cannot move even the eye, eyelid. You know, so, but Allah is so kind to us. So let's ask from his, 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 his mercy to help us to do ibadah better. So whenever we recite this ayah, we should beg for Allah's help, for our salah, for our ibadah, for every moment in life, when we are in trouble, when we are stuck, when we have, we have no way out. So when people hate you, if you ask them for help, you know, don't ask them. Ask Allah. And inshallah, Allah will find you the best of the ways. And Allah will love it. Allah loves when he's asked for help. When you ask people for help, you ask them for money, for maybe to borrow some money or to do something. They'll say, oh my God, this person is keep, you know, at least in their heart, they might be thinking. Some people even will say it in your face. So, but Allah will never say it. Allah will find you the best of the ways. Inshallah. And for everything, he loves to accept the duas. He loves when he is begged for. He loves when he's asked for help. As the Prophet of Allah said, a dua uh, is al ibadah. So dua is worship. You know, uh, ninth habit we learn from here is ask Allah's help in everything. Inshallah, this is what the prophets did. This is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did. Their duas have been given in Quran. Whenever you are stuck, look for those duas which the prophets of prophets said, which the uh, you know Adam said which the Yunus said, which the Ayyub said, Rabbi anni masani durru wa rahmi. They are there. So inshallah, in the coming courses, you will learn the duas also. They are there in the Quran. You can learn it. Alhamdulillah, we have completed our lesson of today. These two verses. Uh, look at this verse. Break it down. Keep the concept in mind. Take 30 seconds. And inshallah, we'll shift to the next part of the class. If you have any quick questions, you're most welcome to ask. Uh, mashallah, there is a very good question. Um, if you are sharing our knowledge regarding any subject to others, just to please Allah, is it also ibadah or ibadah is just sharing religious knowledge? Brothers and sisters, let's have a clarity. I think uh, we all, uh, in, in my, my very limited knowledge, I'm saying this, so uh, may Allah help me to say the right things. I think Islam does not make a distinction. Why are we doing it? This religion... Quran has got science in it. It has biology. It has. Why have Muslims made this distinction between the two? So knowledge is knowledge. Every knowledge belongs to Allah. So help people learn everything. But keep any keep a niya. You know niya. That's what we have learned here. Inshallah, this person will learn about medical sciences. Will help the humanity. Will help other fellow Muslims. And inshallah, uh, ultimately we'll come close to Allah. 
okay so so is so feel free to uh, share all good knowledge with people of course not the you know the the strange things about you know for example which are not useful of human beings uh, which are not good of course we should refrain from sharing such things but all other knowledge is is belongs to allah we can always share it okay uh deen means judgment whereas deen also used for religion how can bifurcate in both brother muhammad safir i earlier said that we have to remember from the context we'll get to know which meanings are used here so in the context of surah fatiha when we say uh, maliki yawmid din uh, uh we would uh, inshallah uh, we, uh, we should know that the meaning of din judgment are used here at other places uh, we'll get to know inshallah from the context which meanings are used right so let's move towards the next part of the lesson auz billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim in the grammar section inshallah today we have something very very interesting to do and this lesson is so important today you know i'm feeling very happy because you will feel very happy today something great is going to happen actually you are going to develop relationship with every line of quran inshallah so you you have already very fast you know to translate 12000 words of quran but inshallah after this class rather this session you will develop relationship with almost almost every line of quran so i need your full attention for this session inshallah i'll show you shortly how in this lesson we'll uh, learn about rabbuhu rabbuhum but more importantly we'll learn about uh, zamair or pronouns or possessive cases of the uh, uh, nouns but what we use is we always use total physical interaction what is tpi let's do a quick uh, uh, you know practice of the tpi and also flesh up yourself Hmm. We hear it. We see it. Think it. Say it. Show it. Love it. And we all do it together. Okay. Are we all ready? Can you repeat it with me, all of you, with actions? So let's do it. Okay. Ah. Uh, hear it. See it. Think it. Say it. Show it. love it and do it together for quran for learning quran inshallah we'll do all these thing for learning allah's book this is the most dear to us inshallah right uh now um shazida i don't know sir okay I, I, please now all questions at the end of the class right let's cover this concept first uh by the way very quickly you have been sent the vocabulary sheet in your uh, uh, whatsapp group you can print it keep it with you this will be a great help signs of nouns in the previous class we have already covered i'm sure you remember them all mashallah today when i asked question you were clear about it uh, we have already done this hua just quickly let's quickly practice it before i come to the new concept hua he hum they anta you ana i antum you all nahnu we okay so 1300 times in quran we have done this concept we are learning it alhamdulillah ism is noun in arabic ism is a name or an attribute both things are ism fail is an action harf is particle or prepositions which are used to join the nouns or verbs okay now in the previous class yesterday we learned about some nouns like muslim mumin salih kafir mushrik and we learned that we can make plurals uh, this is the question i think you were asking how to make the plural singular and plural so one way of making the singular uh, the plural from singular is taking the complete word of, of muslim adding waw noon or ya noon at the end for example making muslimoon or muslimin now how do we know when will we add waw noon 
and when will we add Yanu? Please, somebody from you should answer me at first in the chat box rather than I give you, give you the answer. Uh, Yusha. No, brother, no, not gender. I am saying for making plural from Muslim, there are two ways of making plural. We can make it Muslimoon, Muslimin, Waunun, Yan. So my question is, when will we add Waunun? And when will we add Yan? Yeah. So who would like to answer? In the chat box, please. Very good. Mashallah. So Brother Faisal is saying, when there is double Dhamma, like this, see on this word, Muslim, Mun, this one. So we know we will add Waunun to make it make a plural. Simple. And when there is double Fatha, or kasra, we will add yanun to make a plural. That's it. Simple, right? So this is one way of making plurals. Not all plurals in Arabic are formed in the same way. Remember this rule. You know, in Arabic, whenever I will share some rule with you, remember, we have to keep one window of our brain open. I will use this term again and again. So we'll keep a window of the brain open. Because there will be exceptions. There will be exceptions. And it happens in all languages, almost. And it happens in English even, right? So anyways, that concept we did yesterday. I'm just doing a quick revision. Recording is available. You can watch it again if you're confused about it. So this is how from Muslim, Momin, Salih, Kafir, Mushrik, both types of plurals can be made. Muslimun, Mominun, Salihun, Kafirun, Mushrikun. Or Muslimin, Mominin, Salihin, Kafirin, Mushrikin, depending on what appears there. Now for the coming lesson, let's move down. And the lesson has been divided into different parts. We will do a part, then I'll give you a chance to revise it with me. So today, inshallah, this is what we are going to learn. These are the parts of, actually, these are the possessive cases of nouns. Okay. We have already done the uh, pronouns like we did hua, he, <clears throat> hum, they, anta, you, ana, I, antum, you all, nahnu, we all. Okay. So now we'll do the possessive case who, his, hum, there. Now, this hum, the difference between that hum and this hum is. The hum they will come alone in Quran. It will appear alone as a sap standalone word. While this hum will come joined with some other ism, you know, other word. Okay. So who is hum there? Ka your. You remember ka? We said iya ka. So ka your ye my. Kum your na our na our so these words come in in conjunction joined with other words we will do inshallah practice of it but first i want you to see these parts of arabic pronouns possessive cases appear in quran thousands of times thousands of times almost every line will have it ten thousand times more than that See an example from Quran. If I open Quran, I will find it everywhere. Now I have opened it, right? Now I see the very first line, Qala Yanu Hu Inna Hu Hu. Now this is the who here. Okay. Laisa Laisa min ahli ka ka. This ka is here. Inna hu amanan ghayru salih fala. Next line also has la ka. Be he. And in the eyes of Antakuna Minal Jahilin, next line also has ka. And then it is coming, they are they are coming almost in every line. I can see them here. Who he ha and uh yeah, lakum, lakum is also here. So kum has joined, come in joint form. Every alaikum kum is there again. Almost every line it these are there. 
so i congratulate you uh alhamdulillah so today allah has blessed us allah has made us familiar with every line of quran now when you will be reading quran you'll find something which you are aware about and shortly inshallah we'll practice it a lot and you will also get to know how to how to recognize them in quran okay so the 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 um, you know i again said they are right in front of me bad hum this hum who hum this has this also appears here so next line it also is there hum waj'alna hum so brothers and sisters wa akhahu it is there they are there almost in every line la'alla hum it is again there so rabbukum it is there so who hum ka yi kum na as you see here right in front of you as well abdihi ladunhu lahum these arrows are showing them as part of the words as i said they always come joined with other words so inshallah we will also practice them in the same manner so but i want before i practice it joined with this let's practice it this table okay uh, who would like to do the practice with me we have to make this table very perfect this is no easy task uh, this is not simple task because this is great we are going to become familiar with every line of quran no more stranger so let's do it with the heart with passion with energy brother umar you take the lead okay uh, will i uh, repeat these words yeah who is is hum there ka your ya my ji ji my ko your na our our very good uh this is saidu from ghana brother or sister uh who his whom dear ka yo ye my kum yo na awa mashallah great uh, sister sara bismillahir rahmanir rahim who his whom their ka your ye my kum your na our mashallah Brother Professor Ibrahim, unmute yourself. Who is whom? Naya. Ka you are. Ye my whom you are. Na our. Mashallah. So uh, next is uh, Sister Nalutaya Asia. Sister, I'll give you chance on the coming table when we will join it with the word Rab. We have already learned the meanings of Rab is the Lord Sustainer. Yeah. So let's join these with the Rab, and it will become Rabbuhu, His Rab. Rabbuhum, Their Rab. Rabbuka, Your Rab. Rabbi, My Rab. Rabbukum, Your Rab. Meaning by plural, You're all, all of you. so rabbuna our rab right now this is how these words actually combined with the other words appear in quran so rab is an ism noun they are joined with with noun and they appear in quran in this way nine, more than 900 times in this form rabbuhu rabbuhum rabbuka rabbi rabbukum rabbuna right so sister uh, asya please rabbuhu his rab rabbuhum their rab rabbuka your rab mashallah rabbi my rab rabbukum your rab 
Rabbuna Arab. Beautiful. Sister did it in a very nice manner, peacefully, beautifully pronounced and uh, uh, expressed. So let's give chance to Brother Kabir from Nigeria. Rabbu who is Rab? Rabbu whom they are Rab? Rabbuka, your Rab. Rabbi, my Rab. Rabbukum, your Rab. Rabbuna, our Rab. Excellent, brother. Now, uh, brothers and sisters, this is good to start slow and peacefully in the beginning, but you should practice it enough that you have practiced like this. You know, so I give you a challenge in the coming classes, you are going to challenge me that, uh, you know, we can even do faster than you, Mr. Kashif. So, Yusha. Rabbuhu his Rab. Rabbuhum their Rab. Rabbuka, your Rab. Rabbi, my Rab. Rabbukum, your Rab. Rabbuna, our Rab. Alhamdulillah. So now I will ask uh, Sister uh, Dr. Aksa to do the uh, conversation with me. Okay. So, Sister, if I ask you, Man Rabbuhu, how would you answer? Rabbu Allah. If I say Hello? man rabbu hum. Rabbu hum Allah. Rabbu Allah. Hum Allah. There are two ways. Yeah, yeah you can do it this okay. way. Rabbu hum Allah. That is okay. Uh, uh, for ease of uh, pronouncing it, we can easily say it. Uh, however, according to Arabic formula, you can also join it and you can say Rabbu hum Allah. So both ways is okay. But now I want to give you, okay, uh, okay this is Abdul Rahman. Anyways, I want to give a challenging question to some of you. What if I asked you, Man Rabbuka, how would you answer? Brother Abdul Rahman, would you like to try? If I say, Man Rabbuka, Man Rabbuka, what would you say? Brother Abdul Rahman is unable to, I think, unmute. Just let's give it to, Mashallah, you are all writing in the chat box and I, I like it. You are writing the right answer. Sister Dunya, how would you answer? Man Rabbuka. Rabbi Allah. Rabbi, Rabbi Allah. Allah. MashaAllah. Yeah, you know, we have already learnt it. Rabbuhu, Rabbuhum, Rabbuka, Rabbi. My Rabb. So when I'm asking you a question, you will answer me by saying Rabbi Allah or Allahu Rabbi. You know, MashaAllah. Very good. So, that means we are all learning this. Huh? Or man rabbukum. If I ask all of you, man rabbukum, how would you say? How would you answer? You'll say, Rabbun Allahu. Our Rabb is Allah. By the way, this question, man rabbuka, is very important. You know, in this course, Alhamdulillah, we have lots of bonus things learning. When we will be asked this question, man rabbuka, we'll say, Rabbi Allah. And we'll, inshallah, be uh, an evidence that we tried to learn Allah's words and we know Arabic and we could respond in Arabic when we will be asked this question. Man Rabbuka will say, Inshallah, Rabbi Allah. Okay. So please do enough practice at home that you, you learn these. When I ask, Man Hua, uh, uh, Man Rabbuhu, Allahu Rabbuhu, or Rabbuhu Allahu, or Rabbuhu Allah. All these three ways are okay to say. Man Rabbuhum, Rabbuhum Allah. Man Rabbuka, Rabbi Allah. Man Rabbukum, Rabbun Allah. MashaAllah. So, let's go. So, we can also join uh, with the word Deen. You know? Now, the second meaning of Deen, now you see from the context, you can easily find the second meaning of Deen here. Deen who is Deen. Now you understand which meaning of deen is used here. Deenuhum, their deen. Deenuka, your deen. Deeni, my deen. Deenukum, your deen. You all. Deenuna, our deen. So 
now 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 you understand the meaning the second meaning from the context by expression we can understand okay here the meanings of deen are system of life but let's practice this table who will do the practice yes sir, brother abdul rahman are you able to unmute now yes unmute yourself okay dinuka your deen deeni my deen Brother, could you be a little loud? We can't hear you. Dinuka, your din, dini, my din. Okay, okay, go ahead. Dinuka, your din, dini, my din. Brother, you have to complete. Table, not the part of the table. Start from Dino. Dino, his din. Dino, their din. Dino ka, your din. Dini, my din. Dino kum, your din. Dina, our din. Ashara, Dino na, our din. Very good. So uh, this is uh, now by by the way. Yeah, that's okay. That's uh, the part. Actually, the highlighted, highlighted, and the faint parts are. By this time, you should start understanding that there is a third person, and whenever for third person we respond, we say Dinu who is responded with Dinu. For example, if I say, uh, if I ask any question about Dinu, it will be the way we did it for Rabbu who. So Dinu who Dinu hum, Dinu ka Dini. That's another set. Dinu kum dinu na. That's another set. So actually, there are three sets, you know. So just to give you an idea and make you more conscious about it, dinu hu dinu hum, dinu ka dini, dinu kum dinu na, right? So, inshallah, these uh, these sets actually will help you to better learn the Arabic conversation. Now, let's do a conversation with the help of word ma. Ma means what? Ma is a question word. What? It has other meanings also, but here we are using the meaning what? Ma. Now let's add it with this expression. Ma dinu ka. Let's say if I say ma dinu hu, you'll say dinu hu, dinu hu, full Islam. But if I ask you ma dinu ka, how will you respond? Ma dinu ka. I'm waiting. Please write in the chat box. This is very interesting. These two questions will be asked. Today we have learned something very special. Today is a very special day. Alhamdulillah, we have connected to every line of Quran. We are learning these questions, will be which will be asked in the grave. Man rabbuhu, ma dinu ka, man rabbu ka, ma dinu ka. And inshallah, we will answer in Arabic and we'll know it. Inshallah, we'll say when we will be asked man rabbu ka, we'll say Rabbi Allah. When we will be asked ma dinu ka, we'll say Dini al Islam. Inshallah. So happy about it. Great. Okay, let's move forward. So these are just there is a, just a little tip and a few words which you can practice at your own. You will learn their meanings and you will also learn uh, the possessive cases. So kitab, book, kalam, pen, sa, watch, jabwal. Jabwal is mobile, cell phone. Okay. In Arabic, jabwal is jabwal is cell phone. So you can simply make it kitabuka kitabi, kalamuka kalami, saatuka saati, jabaluka jabali. And you know the meanings also. Your book, my book, your pen, my pen, your watch, my watch, your cell phone, my cell phone. So if you add ma kitabuka, so you might get the Arabic uh, conversation going on. But anyways, let's move forward and do the last thing of the day before we end the class. This is the last minute. Learning tip of the day is beautiful today. How does our brain work? Actually, our brain works when it is given chance to add up many, many things. So it has, we have already learned, it has billions of uh, cells, you know. Now I'm going to show you something with the help of an example. If I say a word of feel, an Arabic word feel, and I want to teach you the meanings, uh, please, those who know the meanings, do not respond in the chat box. Stay quiet, please, for some time. Those who do not know the meanings, they should listen to me carefully and try to give me the word, what does it mean? 
feel feel is uh you you should try to think in your brain when i give example it has a gruff sound feel this is an animal uh it is pronounced as uh you know feel uh but it has in different languages it has different names it is big it is huge with big uh heavy legs and has got a special nose longer one and you know we we love it please start resp responding in the chat box and there is a story in quran about this animal you know there was a king who brought an army uh, which has these animals in it um it smells bad but you know let's say i have tried to use all these words to bring to your mind an animal i think most of you are already bringing it but let's say if still if it doesn't come to your mind i can show you a picture i'm sure by seeing this picture especially my brothers and sisters in africa uh you know uh, probably you you would enjoy life uh seeing them in the wild but there is another uh, uh still another way of also showing it to you moving okay now my purpose of showing you this is all these are different ways of learning okay and this should help us better learn the meanings inshallah in the next class uh, we will definitely talk about how the brain works how can we use it in the best possible way and brothers and sisters uh, alhamdulillah we have completed our lesson but before we say goodbye for today uh, and come to the last prayer please all of you join me uh, for praying for our sister's father uh, she is sitting with us sister saria bashir she was sitting in one of our class when during the class her father passed away her father has gone to his creator we pray may allah bless him with the highest place in janna allahumma arhamhu allahumma adkhilhu aljanna allahumma ajrhu min annar allahumma arhamhu so uh, may allah give her patience may allah raise uh, our sisters uh, you know darajat and uh, for for this great loss she has shown great patience mashallah she is still again you know it was recent uh, but she joined the class she has continued her quran class so uh, may allah keep her steadfast um, we all pray for her father and we uh, sister we are with you in this hour so may allah bless you and reward you for your patience uh so at the end we as we always pray we pray to allah o oh allah make us learn quran recite understand ponder implement propagate and memorize the quran subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik